opportunity to welcome you. I'm Dr. Roney. If you've been here before, you know, uh, you know what I always say, welcome back. Um, I'm glad that you're joining us uh, each time and I get a ton of feedback, um, you know, down in the clinic. So I really appreciate the feedback. It helps a ton. And then if you're new to the cancer conversation, I want to take the opportunity to welcome you as well. Um, big picture objective of this is really information and education. I think it's critical. We all do here at the clinic. It's one of our philosophies here as far as uh, creating, I think I, I like to use the word a movement uh, towards working on educating everybody on this integrative world uh, simply because you know, when we look at conventional care for these chronic diseases like cancer care, it's, it's a 20 chapter book, I like to say, and chemo, surgery, radiation is one of those chapters and an extremely important chapter. Um, I know I've switched gears on, um, you know, potentially utilizing that strategy for myself or a family member when years ago, I don't know that I would have. And simply because it's, it's sometimes a necessity, right? It's just, is what it is. Um, those, those things can do a really good job. However, it's still only one chapter of a 20 chapter book and the other 19 chapters are filling in the blanks of how do we, you know, boost the immune system during that process or how do we get the immune system stronger so they don't get cancer again? How do you increase oxygenation of the body? How do you increase alkalinity and why those are important? And, and then why do we want to look at causes, right? So in the conventional model, None of those things are done. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying it's short. So these other 19 chapters involve looking at causes and why this happened and, and looking at uh, boosting the immune system and alkalizing and uh, oxygenating the body and doing all these great things that can allow the body to get stronger and actually heal as opposed to, hey, we killed the cancer and now we're just going to watch and wait. To me, just never an option personally, right? And that's where these cancer conversations can come in and I can help explain along with the other doctors why that isn't an option for me. Because once you learn this, it's too, it's too common sense to go backwards. It's too common sense to say, yeah, why wouldn't I increase my uh, immune system and, and support it? Why wouldn't I try to figure out what the heck caused this in the first place? Because at the end of the day, Life, I believe is, personally, I believe is risk management. What am I gonna do to lower my risk and increase my upside, right? That's life, that's everything. I apply that to everything and I think it's worked really, really well overall. You just have to have a good plan in order to be able to do that. So the four pillar plan that we incorporate here at the clinic, I think is the plan that honestly, everybody should implement uh, if you're going through a chronic disease like cancer like cancer, because it simply increases your upside. Again, the conventional model, chemo, surgery, radiation, immunotherapy, whatever it might be, very important, but it's only one part of that four pillar approach. So I wanna go over that uh, with you as well, briefly, if you're new to it. If you're, you've been on, you know I like to go over, I like to do a review, because it keeps reinforcing uh, these strategies that I think should be done in, in every model of cancer care across the board. It just isn't. So uh, the education process is significant. And then once you learn uh, and get informed, you become empowered and you, you have better control, right? You all know when you were first diagnosed and if you didn't know much about this side of the alternative world or integrative world, you know that you felt powerless. You're just like at the mercy of the healthcare providers that were working with you in the conventional model. As you learn more and more, you get more power and you get um, more uh, what I call control. And I think that's super, super important for this right here, right? It kind of lessens anxiety and fear and it starts to allow you to take an active participation in your health as opposed to just that watch and wait approach, right? Or just relying on 100% of the chemo surgery and radiation to do its job. So anyway, that's my, you know, that's my quick intro. Tonight we're going to uh, go over, you know, the, the, I would call it the state of the union in cancer as far as what are the statistics showing? Uh, what is the movement that we're seeing? I know Keneally says all the time, 
that cancers that used to have, say, a 30-year, 40-year, or 50-year warranty, meaning she wouldn't see it till after a certain age, now she's seeing it younger and younger and younger. And why is that? What are some of the variables that are contributing to it? And then as part of this class, what are some of the things that you could do to offset that, right? Because that not only bodes well for prevention, but it bodes well that if you have active cancer, what are the things you need to be looking at variable wise that are gonna help your body heal and uh, significantly important, right, to the process. So tonight's class is gonna be geared towards that um, and solution oriented as well. Again, the three different, I'd say, demographics that this conversation in our clinic appeals to is number one, people that want to prevent cancer, right? That's never had it, they want to prevent it. Number two, people that have active cancer. And then number three, people that have had it, yet are NED, which means no evidence of disease, and they want to prevent it returning. So all these strategies, that we're, even the class that we're talking about tonight, it goes for each of those three uh, demographics that I just mentioned. It's for the people that want to prevent it, the people that have it, and then of course the people that want to prevent reoccurrence of it. So each class is going to be geared towards each one of those demographics. So if that if that fits, you'll you'll definitely get a lot out of each of these classes for sure. So let me go ahead and share the screen because I want to go over with you, um, especially if you're new to this conversation. I want to go over with you the. Um, oh, I want to go over with you the um, the concept that I'm talking about as far as the four pillars because that's the plan that you should be following. Uh, I don't want to say should, but it's a plan that works really, really well. That if you are following, you'll be able to increase your upside and decrease your downside, and I've seen it work so many times that it, I'm personally convinced that everybody should be doing this. I feel that the conventional model should be doing this. I've said this a hundred times. You know, when, when the pandemic hit, the way we handled the pandemic as a system, a healthcare system, um, it really wasn't a, the healthcare part of it. We handled it as a sick care system, right? People were sick, they dealt with it. They didn't do much to talk about prevention, better eating, better exercise, taking certain supplements that are going to boost your immune system, talking about the hydroxychloroquines and the ivermectins that many doctors and immunologists were doing a really good job of identifying those things and how they could help. We didn't do any of that, right? We didn't talk about that one time. All we talked about is this one cause, one cure approach. Not good or bad, I'm just saying it's short-sighted. Cancer world is the same way. It's, we're, we have this, we don't know anything about this stuff, right? And so we're only going to talk about this. It's, it's an injustice in my opinion. So um, that's why these cancer conversations really, they were born out of that frustration, to be honest with you. So let me go through and give you an idea. Myself and Dr. Keneally have been on it just a little bit. Uh, she's finishing up with patients. So I like to do my intro so you all understand exactly where we're coming from. Because at the end, last week especially, or last time, there were a lot of questions on specific cancers. My friend has this, my sister has that, my brother has that. The four pillar approach gang is, is what I wanna review. So you know, anybody with active cancer prevention and or preventing reoccurrence, they should be looking at this four pillar approach and following it almost to a T, right? So uh, we're in Irvine. Uh, I always like to tell patients where we're at. We're in Irvine, California, Southern California. Um, you know, very close to mountains and beaches and things like that. Um, and it's a good area, it's a nice safe area uh, of the country. And I think that's important. A lot of people ask about the demographics and things like that, but really good area. Clinic's 30,000 square feet. Half the clinic is cancer care, half of it is wellness. Uh, so 15,000 is devoted to specifically to cancer care. Um, you saw my uh, CV, basically I've been doing functional medicine for 20 plus years. I got into this cancer world over the last decade or so, um, had some personal experiences with cancer, family members with cancer. Uh, and so this is kind of near and dear to my heart. So getting involved in this is really purposeful for me. And so I take it very seriously. I take your care very seriously. I wanna make sure the I's are dotted and T's are crossed. I actually run the cancer center downstairs, so uh, or the director 
Uh, so I'm involved in the systems. I'm saying it's perfect. I'm saying we're continually working every day to make sure that we have those things uh, done for you. And I'm heading that, so I take it very seriously. Dr. Keneally's been in this game for, for years and years and years, um, constantly researching, constantly reading, constantly um, trying to learn better, newer and better things. And this is why the clinic is the way it is. We have probably the most resources in the country, if not the world as far as cancer care, uh, probably the biggest space devoted towards it, uh, have multiple doctors on staff uh, helping treat cancer uh, and, and coming up with the plans and the care for it. So the clinic itself, I always say it's my opinion, I did my research for a family member not too long ago. It's what I came back to every time. So, um, and I'll talk a little bit about that. So the four pillars, I just wanna go over this briefly because the plan is, is really where the value is, right? The value is in coming up with something that can go step by step, cross all the uh, uh, T's and dot all the I's. So the first thing is your testing. So in the conventional model, you're gonna have your CAT scans, PET scans, MRIs, ultrasounds, cancer tumor markers, things like that. We do those as well. In addition to that, we wanna get deeper into the nitty gritty. So we'll test things like uh, we use the RGCC test at times. It's not solely what we utilize. Some doctors like that one. Other doctors like something called the Garden 360, the Fulgent testing. It's a newer company that's doing uh, DNA testing for cancer. So some of the doctors like to use all of them to try to figure out uh, a couple things. Number one, circulating tumor cells. These are cells that have basically broken off from the original tumor and could be circulating in your bloodstream. To me, that's one of the most important tests to have because say somebody comes here with active cancer and or no evidence of disease, we want to find out what the baseline of those circulating tumor cells are because if they're up and say we have no evidence of disease, but those are high, the research shows that there's a higher chance for those to turn into something. So reoccurrence rates go up if you have a higher rate of circulating tumor cells or a higher number or amount. And so that's not something that's typically done in the conventional model. If you have no evidence of disease, as an example, they basically just say, well, we're gonna actively surveil, which means every six months, eight months, a year, they're gonna look at scans. To me, that makes, I mean, that some of that makes sense. Of course, we wanna do that, but just sitting and waiting and not working on the human body and, and increasing its health potential so that doesn't happen, so that reoccurrence doesn't happen, that's the answer, ladies and gentlemen. I'll, I'll say that till I'm blue in the face. That's the answer. Actively participating in your health by doing more in-depth testing. So the RGCC can test those. It can test the, um, the uh, chemo agents that your body most, might be most sensitive to. It can test um, natural agents that your body most might be, or the uh, circulating tumor cells might be most sensitive to. So we can get some in-depth testing that's individualized to you as opposed to cookie cutter. The Garnet test can also test for these chemo agents as well as the Fulgent test. So we wanna utilize all those and hopefully they all match, but if they don't, the doctor's gonna use their best discretion as to what chemo agents, if you're doing say low dose here uh, to you. So RGCC, Garnet, things like that are really important. The other test that we do, things called Nagalase. Nagalase is an enzyme secreted by the cancer cells that if increased, it's blocking your immune system from attacking the cancer cell. So that's not a test that's often done in the uh, conventional world. Extremely important test. If, it, if you have something you know, blocking your immune system, you certainly wanna know about it so we can bring it down so your immune system has a better chance to work. We also test something called PHI. PHI is also an enzyme that, that tells us a lot, but essentially it tells us that you're in a low oxygen state. So the oxygen in the environment is anaerobic, they use the term anaerobic, and we would take that information and make sure we work on increasing oxygenation to the body by using things like hyperbaric, we have something called CVAC, we use uh, EBU or RHP, which is basically removing blood, filtering it, ozonating and oxygenating it, and putting it back into the uh, body. And that really helps increase oxygenation. So we're always looking for things testing wise that could tell us if you're in these kind of states. 
uh, out acidity, we simply can use urine strips to tell us if your body extracellularly is acidic or not. And then we could put plans together um, or, or a plan together to, to raise that uh, acidity into alkalinity, which oxygen and alkaline environments, cancer doesn't thrive well in either of those. So we definitely want to do that. So that gives you an idea of the pillar one, which is testing and in-depth testing beyond what they would uh, do in the conventional world. Again, to give you a more individualized plan that could help you heal. Pillar number two is going to be starving the cancer, killing the cancer, and I'll throw in oxygenating and alkalizing the body as well. But the main two, starving the cancer, we use a lot of repurposed drugs, and some of those repurposed drugs are, are gained. The knowledge is gained from the testing that we do. And then we also, pillar two, is going to be uh, the kill phase. So the kill phase is surgery, chemo, radiation, things like that, uh, immunotherapies. Here we do low-dose chemo, which is, uh, they'll use the term fractionated chemo. It's a fraction of the normal dose. And we do that by bringing the insulin levels down and injecting the chemo agents, uh, infusing the chemo agents that were from either the RGCC, the Garden 360, or the Fulgen testing that could tell us, uh, that could give you more specificity of those chemo agents uh, killing the circulating tumor cells or the tumor cells. So that's pillar two. Pillar three would be all your immune boosters, whether it's supplements to increase your immune system, and or your IVs, vitamin C, mistletoe are probably the two most popular, but there's so many more that we have and that we use to increase your immune system. Anytime somebody is getting chemo, their immune system is, is taking a beating. Their white blood cells, their bone marrow. So without question, what we should be doing is increasing their immune system Why the chemo is doing its job. So we could still get the benefit of the chemo or low dose chemo doing its job, and keeping your body strong and healthy during the process, right? It, again, it should be mainstream, it's just not, but these are the strategies that we can use uh, to be able to uh, boost your immune system. And that, whether you're doing chemo or not, is a critical element in fighting chronic disease like cancer. So that's pillar three. And then pillar four, perhaps for a lot of you, is one of the most important, is trying to figure out what the causes are, right? And they're numerous, and we'll go over some of them tonight. But you're looking at everything from infections in the body to the foods that you eat, to your gut health, to your the way your liver detoxes and overexposure to chemical toxins, uh, mycotoxins from mold infections, could be parasite infections, could be candida infections, epstein bars and other viral infections, bacterial infections, etc. Anything that the immune system is going to see and say, I don't know what that is, and I'm going to attack it, will create inflammation which creates free radical damage or free radicals, which creates damage to your cells. And when those cells are damaged, they no longer go through what they call cellular apoptosis or cell death. And so those cells start to replicate out of control. So that is all started by fuels. I call them fuels to the fire are things that are sitting in your body that nowadays we're way overexposed to. So if we're overexposed to those and they're sitting in our body, the immune system is just constantly attacking. You know, that could be in your breast tissue. It could be in your, in your prostate. It could be, I mean, anywhere in the body sitting there for that process to take place and constantly be immune response, immune response, inflammation, free radicals, what they call oxidative stress to the tissues. So that's your four pillar approach. The testing, the star phase, kill phase, oxygenation, alkalization, pillar three immune boosting, and then addressing the root causes. That should be a standard of care right? No matter what you're going through conventional or you're going through uh, integrative, that's the standard that you want to learn and you want to implement. It'll increase your upside significantly. Dr. Welcome. Kaylee, yeah. Hi. Good to see you, Dad. Welcome everyone. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm glad we have all these special people uh, that want to learn from us. And today I had a patient from Guatemala today who was, you know, telling me how much she learned so much from the cancer conversations and how it has changed awesome. the way uh, that she thinks and it helps her family because her mother had breast cancer she has breast cancer and then she just found out that her sister has uh, cancer and so anyway and another patient also told me how appreciable appreciative and thankful they are um, so you know we we do this for you because we want you to know as 
much as you can possibly know. And that's why we also repeat things yeah. because there's, you know, we find that patients have to continually be um, informed and educated, even though they might have heard it before, they're in a different frame of reference and perspective, you know, the 10th time. Right. And so um, the cancer, uh, you know, the cancer arena is changing ter terrifically. And um, lots of people now are really understanding that we just can't do a drive-through treatment program of a surgery, a chemo, or radiation, or maybe the new drugs of immunotherapy. And we must, we must address every single thing that's going on in the body. And yes, that would be great if it were that simple, but it's not. Yeah. And what we've seen for the past 14 months is a very, very significant rise in young people with cancer. And the big problem with that is we have no good surveillance for young people less than 40. Because for men, there's no testing whatsoever. And for women, the only testing available is pap smears. And so we want to, that's what we want to address tonight. And we've got to create an awareness and education around the world because we've got to all help each other yeah. be the best we can be. And we've got to also try to prevent and er, practice early detection. And these are things, a lot of things you can do at home. We mm -hmm. teach you how to do that. And, um, but we want to increase the chances of everyone having a better life and existence. Yeah, we, we love this, by the way, gang. Just so you know, we love doing this. We look forward to it. We talk about it all week. It's just part of our, I think it's part of our purpose in yes. trying to, this movement, I, we call it a movement. Right. It's a movement, you know, we, again, I, I mentioned the conventional care. And again, there, there's a, a great deal of, of um, purpose to that. There, and there, value. There's and value. value yeah. if you need it. Absolutely. You know, like I had a patient today that I saw for follow-up and she has breast cancer. And so she wanted to shrink it. Well, she was very successful in shrinking the breast cancer. And then I, something I told her on our last visit said, Dr. Keneally, um, you know, I said something. I don't remember exactly what the words I said. And so she was so happy because she goes, oh, you're not going to believe it. I got my breast cancer taken care of. And I just want to tell you, thank you so much for putting things in a different light. Mm -hmm. And she goes, now I, I, feel, I, I feel so relieved and now I'm ready to do the rest of the work. So this is, you know, but I gave her the opportunity to try to resolve it. She was in probably late 50s, a uh, female woman. Young people, I probably would not let them observe and watch because cancer is very quickly and aggressively growing in a young person. So we want to be very, very careful and cautious and have a definitive plan with a young person. And so, but anyway, um, th there is a purpose to surgery, sometimes chemotherapy, yep. sometimes radiation. I know I had a young person come to me and said, oh, I, I was going to tell her she didn't have to do radiation. I said, absolutely no. They found it in your lymph nodes. Your KI-67 is 60%. I said, absolutely, you must do the radiation. And so anyway, she was not happy with my answer. But then I said, what would you want me to tell you not to, to do something that wasn't right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, I, I hear every patient and every patient's case is different. We sure. do not have anybody with the same cases because you got to look at all the details so let's talk about what is going on now in the last year or two i know that we in our community here we have a big hospital system called city of hope and um, they did a research study on cancer world in the nation and they found that there was going to be a 50 percent increase in cancer cases in the next five years and so already about 1,700 people die a day of cancer and more and more people are being diagnosed. And, you know, Nixon declared war on cancer in 1970. And here we are in 2023, the things that we can do and achieve are enormous. But this cancer situation in medicine in general is not being preventive and proactive and personalized for every single patient. They just have this cookie cutter approach, but we know that you're a 50 to 100 million 
the hundred trillion cells. cells miracle every day, there is not a cookie cutter system for any one person. And so we have to be artists and teachers and educators and, and students ourselves mm -hmm. so that we can study every single thing about each person. And so, and the other thing is like, I had a 38 year old with melanoma today and I go, you don't live in a Petri dish, which we're controlling the medium. You're living in this big world that has now inherent with the industrial and technological revolution. And we're living in a world that humans have never lived in. And so we've got to take into consideration, not just what you're doing, but the world around us that mm -hmm. is doing. So let's talk about what's going on uh, yeah. with cancer today. So the estimates, right, for cancer and then the age and cancer risk. We talk about this all the time that they, we're seeing it younger and younger. They, they're looking at different demographics and they're seeing things just change and get more aggressive and get younger. And that's the part where, so what I wanted to ask you if they, with that study from, uh, was it City of Hope you said? Yes. Did they say the what whys? As oh, far? no, no, no. They just know, no, they're, it's yeah. a business. And right. so, right. and so right. they're, they're just saying, how do we prepare for with the buildings? Yes. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. And so, I and gotcha. the doctors and everything else. So. I got gotcha. you. Okay. So the age and cancer risk, the incidence rates for cancer overall crime steady as age increases. We know that. And this graph, represents that but what we're seeing is these blue the blue you know blocks here they're getting bigger you know earlier right because cancer used to be an old person's disease right well now it's any anything's possible yeah and and the, and the one thing with that gang there there's that overload principle right if we wanted to simplify this we're just overloaded between stress i think stress is a major major factor that that even young people with you know, I think we, we all probably can attest to this. We didn't have social media. We didn't have, there was so many things that we didn't have when we were younger that was so much simpler. And I hate to be that guy, right? Oh, when I was young, right? But, but the reality is there's so much younger, they're starting younger comparing to each other. There's so much stress response involved in all that. You know, everybody puts out on social media that, that life is perfect and it's just not that way. No. But it, the younger you are, the more you look at that, and I think you get down on your own self sometimes for that. So I think you're dealing with that. And then, of course, the environmental factors and toxins and chemicals and so forth. I mean, you add it all up. It's just we're being overwhelmed. Right. Quite yeah, frankly. and that's what we're going to talk about. Yeah. So. So as I already mentioned earlier that, you know, there's the amount of people who die of cancer, you know, so it's uptick from 2022 projections. So that tells you that our paradigm of how we're, you know, really doing an, interrogor, an interrogatory consult with our patients, we are not doing, we're not asking the right questions and we're not coming up with the right answers and we're not doing the right investigation. So we need to preemptively like really know these statistics, number one, but number two say, Let's look at all the contributing causes, which we know on PubMed, there's all the articles on this chemical does this, this one does this, this one. I, I tell people there's not a PubMed article for the hundred chemicals together that are living in each one of us. Yeah. And so, but if we're seeing an increase, but we're smarter, something's not right with the paradigm. With the paradigm. If, if I said to you, the paradigm that's conventional would treat the disease versus the paradigm that we incorporate treats the person. Right. Exactly. right? That's a big difference, yes. right? We don't want to just treat, you don't really, really don't have cancer per se, even though that's the diagnosis. The cancer is a symptom. Right. Right. A symptom of an entire biological systems problem. All the way down to the cellular right. level, not responding the way it's supposed to respond, right. which then it can happen by itself. It just doesn't happen that way. Right. There are mitigating factors that will cause the cell not to, um, you know, not to heal, not, right. to, not to replenish and replace. It becomes oxidatively stressed. That's right. And then it replicates out of control because it can't go through apoptosis anymore. Right. So this is a biggie, right? Yeah. Just look at that. One in 260 children will be diagnosed with cancer before age 20. I mean, that's a horrific statistic. And, you know, I used to tell people we have a warranty until you're 40, but now I can't say that with what we're seeing. And I know at my age, we did not have people with cancer in my elementary and high school 
um, our college, when no one had diabetes or cancer or autoimmune or ADD or any chronic illness. So we, we're, we're seeing in illnesses are only increasing and 60% of young people today already have one or more chronic illness. So. Again, paradigm, right? Something we're doing is, is definitely not working. Yeah, so, and they say that cancer is just going to be increasing with every generation. So we should all be saying, wait, stop. We need to do everything and look, take a look at this. And we ought to be collaborative mm -hmm. and cooperative with everyone to find out, well, how is this person doing? And how's this person doing? And how's this person? Because our patients, you know, they go to other doctors and they go, oh, no, you can't do vitamin C. No, you can't do this. No, you can't do that. No, 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 no. And I'm like, no, we have to have different platforms to kill this cancer. You know, it's got to be the nutritional pl platform. It might be the repurposed drug platform. It may be the chemo platform. It may be hyperthermia platform. But we, we can't take a risk. This is your life. So we have to do everything to ensure patients have everything on board at the same time that they have the most powerful cancer killing effect. For example, for repurposed drug, there's over 310 repurposed drugs studied that have anti-cancer properties. So yeah. why wouldn't we try to do the most efficacious ones and also get rid of mold and get rid of yeast and also get rid of parasites and all the drags to the immune system? I had a patient that I just spoke to, um, a reoccurrence of ovarian. And basically she said, it's really not a reoccurrence. They never really got rid of it. So I said, okay, tell me what you did. She did some of the integrative work. She did some IPT or, or low dose chemo, fractionated chemo. She did a couple other things and she said it would, the numbers, they're, they're working on that CA-129, which is a tumor marker. It would go down, but then it wouldn't, it wouldn't go down. So she, she did like 24 sessions and et cetera. Et cetera yeah, mm -hmm. of the low dose chemo and so forth. And then I started to get into asking her, well, what else did you do? What were they layering it with say hyperthermia? And then maybe using some of the photosynthesizers like endo laser or curcumin. LED bed or curcumin or some of those things that in addition to the low dose or fractionated chemo that when you start layering it you give it a one two three four five punch and that's right. what i learned with other clinics just to give you an, a comparison of what i've learned over time being here they all don't have all those tools in the toolbox right so they just do what they have i'm not saying that's a bad thing but a lot of times and i think you can attest to that it's not that one thing that's going to do it it is layering it with multiple different kill factors. Right. Dr. Keneally mentioned I, the repurposed drugs. So I explained to this patient, I said, we might need to use the repurposed drugs, the low dose chemo with potentially using better testing to get the, the chemo agents that our body or those cancer cells might be more sensitive to. Right. So that's a variable that could have been missing. The hyperthermia is a variable, potentially ICG and nano ICG is a variable. And I said, did you also strengthen your immune system right. during the process like vitamin C and mistletoe? There were no's, not, not her fault, right? She's right. just being guided. And then, I, then the biggest question I asked her, I said, has anybody ever gotten into the causes, right? And really looked at your cellular metabolism and seeing if your cells, if you do have heavy metals or toxins or infections or your hormones are imbalanced or your stress responses is not uh, mitigated properly. And I went into all that and the answers were no. Right. So. It, yeah, because you've got to get rid of all the garbage and all the drags to the immune system. you got to do it all. Yeah. So, you know what? Right. And that goes back to the study that was done over the last year. The patients that did it all, they did phenomenally well. Right. Okay. So there's a change for us even here as far as coming here, being here. We tell everybody now four to six week minimum to be here and longer depending on the stage of cancer and the aggressiveness and things like that to get you right, to get you well. Uh, because we sometimes have to implement all those strategy strategies and the human body, you know, I, I sometimes it's like the human body is what it is. It's only going to heal depending on how much we have to clean up. Right. So that could take months and months and months. Right. Not exactly. our fault. Right. I always and say it's it, not it's our also, fault. And it's also, it's changing your personal living and lifestyle every day. Right. So we talk about lifestyle factors. Of course, you know, I tell people your food is information to turn on and off a cell and nourish the cell. So if you're eating, you know, packaged and fast food and ultra processed food, 
that can have the proper information for your cells. So we, you know, we know alcohol, alcohol is a toxin. Uh, that's all there is to it. And I just was reading a study this weekend about, you know, because there's all these different studies on alcohol, but the bottom line is alcohol is, is a toxin. Yeah, it's toxic. So, and if you were to, you know, dr drink alcohol, there's lots of little count counterbalancing that patients can do if they were to drink, but you definitely should not be drinking seven days a week. Yeah. So if you were to draw, draw, enjoy a glass of wine, but, you know, when I tell people if they have cancer, I go, you know, alcohol's off the table. Yeah. You know, let's, yeah. we've got to get, we've got to do later. everything later. later. Yeah. Um, survival is highest for patients with thyroid or prostate or melanoma. You know, that you see how it is, all the other ones they don't mention. Uh, pancreatic cancer is a very, very serious cancer. Yeah. We've seen it here. Um, and if that could be detected earlier, that's way better. Uh, liver is harder to treat. Esophagus is harder to treat. So um, that's why prevention and early detection right. is an absolute mandatory yeah. thing for all of us in the world today. All right. Estimated new cancer causes death by sex, United States 2023. So this gives you just an idea of the numbers, the percentages, male, female, and just gives you an idea of what we're seeing, you know, uh, and what the numbers look like. When we get into these numbers, I, I can tell you being here for years now, my health has even, or my health regimen mm -hmm. has increased dramatically yeah. just based on what my eyeballs tell me and what I see. And it's like, okay, the exercising that my, my diet, my exercising, uh, my healthy supplement regimen is not enough anymore. I'm doing oh, yeah. testing on mycotoxins and infections and heavy metals. I'm going, I went to the biological dentist. I'm doing all those things because you see, you just see more and more yeah. and you just get more and more, okay, regimented as far as what needs to get done. But yeah. this gives you, this gives you a good idea of what we're seeing. All right. Uh, so here's the big risk factors. Okay. So ultra processed foods really kind of embrace an ancestral eating what people ate 500 years ago, yeah. which was, you know, they ate protein, which is meat and chicken and fish. It used to be good. I don't know. We can talk about that, but uh, you want to eat, you know, you have to have protein in order to build muscles, uh, and fruits and veggies and really good fats, which are the olive oil and the butter and the coconut oil because a lot of fats are not healthy and they change the membrane and changing the membrane of the cell, that means that that cell cannot take care of you properly. So we, we, we you know, we're eating, there's a lot of seed oils out there. If you ha don't know about seed oils, like canola, canola oil or so green oil, those are, those are carcinogenic. Yeah. So we need to avoid those. Environmental toxins, I could talk for, Days. Many, many, many conversations on environmental toxins. So I would recommend that, you know, you don't see them necessarily, but they're in the air. The air pollution is at an all time high. Water is loaded with pollutions, toxins, and heavy metals. The insecticides, pesticides, glyphosphates, DDT, endocrine disruptors. And I tell people on PubMed, there's an article about one of those toxins and what it does. But you put 100 together synergistically and you have a recipe for disaster. And then if you genetically don't detox well for some reason or whatever, your liver's not good or something in your body isn't okay and refined to detox, then, you know, you are laden with all of these toxins. So you have to be aware of uh, environmental toxicity. Mm -hmm. Lack of physical activity. You know, we, we are sitting on a computer, so people are sedentary. So you got to have you have 800 muscles. They incredibly help the immune system and the energy of the body. Mm -hmm. uh, alcohol. I just talked about tobacco. Tobacco is the number one factor with a with um, you know with lung cancer. So inheritance gene changes. There's the BRCA, the Lynch, some of these familial, but these are very 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 small percent of the population. Right. Believe me, it's about five percent, seven percent sometimes. But it's a very, very low amount. But if you do have it, that means you need to really amp who you are and what you do and what you find out more so. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you that 50% of BRCA patients also don't develop cancer. Oh, right, right. So that means that it has to do with lifestyle because they did, a, they did an analysis of 44,000 identical twins. And the difference was 
their eating and their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So we know that it's not just genetic. Always oh, this, this saying of genes load the gun, right? Environmental factors or lifestyle pulls the trigger. Right. Remember that. So the genes load it, but the lifestyle is what pulls the trigger. Right. Important. And then we have um, the acquired gene things, epigenetics. epigenetics and stuff. And then the birth cohort, it's like, you know, what year were you were born? What were you exposed to? You know, all the, and in the last, I'd say 40 years, probably, and that's what we're seeing in the cancer group is you guys had an enormous amount of influenza. And I said, you know, your body keeps score of everything, mm -hmm. everything from your trauma to your drama, to your stress of your life, okay? To everything you've eaten, everything you've experienced, your nutritional deficiencies or lack thereof. I mean, everything, the chemicals that you're exposed to, the EMF you're exposed to, I mean, we can go on and on. And they call that the exposome. So the in, entire environment that you've been exposed to your entire life and it's cumulative. So we have to, you know, we, we really need to be examining, get the microscope out of our life. Mm -hmm. I think this is a given with what we're eating. Yeah. Okay. Start reading the labels of every single thing. Become a forensic food scientist. Okay. And so we, you know, we, you know, this is something easy to change. And we know that colorectal cancer in women, I mean, in people are going, it's the third most diagnosed cancer in the U.S. in men. And one of the biggest things, this is a segue, is you're carrying your phone in your pocket mm. because it changes the electrical activity of your testes and your other parts of your body. So, um, but anyway, get off the food that is not going to serve you. This is just a no brainer, but I think people need to be heard, heard this yeah. and repeated this. Yeah. And we'll do uh, subsequent uh, conversations on this. specifically on food. We'll have Liliana, our nutritionist up here and talk heavily about it. So this is in a, a magazine that I get called Cure, C-U-R-E. And it's all about cancer, latest, greatest cancer information and cancer updates. And this was their article on environmental toxins. I'm like, I'm so excited. I gave it to our, one of our staff to put in here because I said, this is amazing. And so finally, I'm like, but what oncologist addresses this? Right. What surgeon addresses this? None of them. In fact, my patients frequently tell me that their doctor says, oh, you can eat anything you want. If you want milkshake, you can have milkshake. If you want a hamburger, you can have a hamburger. You can have anything. And toxins, I don't know what you're talking about. That's really what they say. Well, here it is in in a, it's everywhere. It, yeah, it's it, everywhere. So that information is everywhere yeah, these days. And, and you're not going to learn all this overnight, but you know, start, like I said, becoming a, an, an analysis of your entire existence. So yep, those. Uh, that's why we're so heavily into the detox here, uh, because we know that exposure for everybody. And if we did testing, which we do most people have multiple different chemicals that are elevated in their body. So the detox, whether it's saunas, Epsom salt baths, 21 day detox, et cetera, we do it. We recommend it early and often. Right. So I did a little posting yesterday, I think it was yesterday on breast implants because I have seen so many people in the last five years, including mm -hmm. several of our staff members, Yep. yep who have come to me and showed me and told me about their experience getting their breast implants out. And then they showed me their, their whole surgery. And if you looked at a surgery, which I will put on next, I will do this for a further cancer show. Shep, take note of that. We'll do a whole video because I think if, all you need is 10 seconds of the yeah, video. Right, right. And so it, it there, you can't even see the implant. If you saw the implant, it looks like a balloon filled with water. Well, this was encrusted with inflammatory reactive tissue because it's reacting to a foreign body. Mm -hmm. And so you have this layer, I mean, many layers, okay? You have this nice little implant that you can't see anymore because it's encrusted in this shell of inflammatory tissue. Mm -hmm. So I think if you saw it, and I know a lot of my patients who have in the last five years, many, many of mm -hmm. them, have gotten the implants out and they say in 24 Gosh. hours, Dr. Kinley, I can't tell you how much better I feel. <clears throat> so I'm always very uh, cautious. I know uh, that it's something people do, you know, and there's a great 
um, support group called Breast Implant Illness online. I would have anyone before they put a, a foreign body into their system, they should be looking at all the pros and cons of that. It's just an example, gang, of anytime your immune system sees something foreign, it could be a toxin, chemical, infection, it doesn't matter. They're, they're all relevant. It's going to create a reaction, and that reaction is inflammation which then leads to damage to the cell. So this is just another example of things that, of something that could create that immune response. Right, the last testing that they mentioned about heavy metals. So I mentioned on a prior cancer conversation about the heavy metals in baby foods. In all baby foods, organic and non-organic, there were all heavy metals in baby foods. So that is mercury, lead, cadmium and aluminum. Mm -hmm. So then I just read over the weekend that they're trying to find a safe level of lead in the baby food. I'm like, well, there's no, mm -hmm. the EPA publishes, there's no safe level of any heavy metals that are in your body. Your body wasn't made with heavy metals. And so we can't, that's a, we can't accept that. So unfortunately though, you know, there's things that you can do to remove these and try to avoid them. That's why I'm kind of down on merc on fish because it's loaded with mercury and nanoplastics. In fact, I read an article in one of my journals that they found nanoplastics in the stool now. So now like we're all, you know, we're all unfortunately inundated and you have to live a, a very conscientious living and know what to do. And there's lots of very simple things that you can do. I'll maybe uh, Shep, we put out a little thing that patients can do just to be aware of toxins and what they can do daily. Yeah, so we'll put sure. that out in the next day or two. Give us, because we're busy, so it's sure. give it a couple give of days. Give a little time, yeah. The diagnostic testing, good stuff, right? Yeah, so RGCC, I use it as a liquid biopsy. The other test that we do, it's a guardian, but it's called gallery. So it's gallery testing that looks for circulating tumor DNA. The bioimmune that a lot of our patients listening tonight have already had done, I learned this from a sarcoma cancer survivor, and he had sarcoma of his leg at the age of 22, probably 50 years ago, and uh, they told him amputation was his only answer, and he said, forget it, I'm not gonna have my leg amputated. So he spent the next 11 years, not months, 11 years figuring out how to save his leg and cure himself of cancer, went around the world to study everything that he could find, on how to uh, you know, help himself. So then I fast forward, I meet him in his 50s at a conference that uh, they have annually every year. And he told me his life story. I said, I gotta learn everything that this guy knows. And that's how the bioimmune, because you have acupuncture points on your fingers and toes that correspond to every organ in your body. And every point is like a wire or a string of pearls to an organ or gland. So we look at the energy that's flowing through your meridian. Meridians have been known for 5,000 yeah. years. It's nothing new, but it gives us invaluable information. But it also tells me, a can I do something called the cancer cascade, the timeline. So we want to know what things could possibly work on the cancer. The, and we use a lot of Chinese herbs that have been around and used for hundreds of years. Uh, so full vent technology oncology is another testing that we can try to look for maybe a clinical trial for a patient, maybe a drug that might work best for you. So it'll tell us what's available in the United States that can possibly help you. Then the NutriVal, we always try to do that because your body is a biochemical machine. And if you don't know your biochemistry and what you're deficient in, or maybe how your gut's working, your antioxidants, your heavy metals, and your intracellular analysis of your minerals, then your body can't work. So you got to know if you have the right nutrients every single day so that your body works. And more importantly, the right gut for our body to work and absorb these. I tell people, it's not what you take. It's what your body is bioavailable and able to absorb for you. So that is something that it's great to do, you know, on every patient. Oh yeah, we, we, we do it pretty much on everyone. So among different population groups, including differences based on race, ethnicity, socioeconomic status, and geographic location. So yeah, the, the gang, this chart just gives you an idea of, you know, uh, again, the different demographics and things like that. And over the years, what they're seeing, but I mean, in general, it's kind of going up everywhere. It doesn't, 
it's not really isolated too much. Um, you know, one demographic versus another. It's just everybody's overwhelmed is, is really right. what this this chart, you know, kind of says. It's it's just everywhere. Right. So, exactly. And, and it's because, again, in the environment that we live in. So the advances in cancer treatment and prevention, I'll let you handle that. Yeah, one. that's why I just was mentioning, you know, there's no surveillance for, like I said, there's pap smears for women and for Women, they recommend a mammogram sometime between 35 and 40. Well, a mammogram looks at calcifications. For every 10,000 mammograms they do, they find uh, and save one life. Or they not find, they, they, we save one life. So in our clinic, we don't rely just on mammograms. We, mammograms look for calcification. Ultrasound looks for lumps and bumps. And thermography looks at vascularity. So all three, the original form of breast imaging was thermography, all right? So then thermography was was put aside and then mammograms came and they now don't use thermograms. I mean, they do now because it's all coming back because we found that they're all giving us different information. Mm -hmm. So breast imaging, because you're, you'll see on your report, it'll say your breasts are dense, so therefore we may not find what we need to find. So that medically tells, well, most women have dense breasts. Yeah. And so that means we can't just rely on mammography for breast imaging. And for men, men have nothing. So, you know, men have absolutely no, there's no testing. And then they're, they're, they're macho men. So they really don't think they're wrong. Anything's wrong. And I always tell them, look, we're going to verify your, your Hercules. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. So these are things that you can do right now. And you, a lot of you may be doing them already. Um, and so one, you know, stay in the cancer conversation. So you can, you know, they're like, we're all in this together to help mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. And so, um, the more that, um, you guys are listening and paying attention and you guys, can, we're going to do a whole, I know a lot of people send in questions. We're going to do a whole cancer conversation on questions. So those are, I did answer a few yesterday. Um, but we can, um, we will be addressing your, your, your questions. One thing is master the miracle you get to live in every day. Don't take it for granted. Don't, you know, think it's just, oh, it's going to be okay. Pay attention to your body and steward it like you want to live forever. Be your own best doctor. Right. You can listen to your doctors over here. You can listen to the integrative doctors like us. And then you can come up with a formula that you, you anchor to. Right? right? That's the control that we were talking about. The only way you get that is information and education. Right. Who causes and then huge... Dr. Maroney already talked about all the root causes, but there are many, many, many guys. And so, because patients always say, oh gosh, Dr. Keeley, do I need to do all of this? And I go, well, you know, you don't go to a car dealership and tell them you just want the wheels or you just want the engine or you just want the windows. You want all the pieces of the car. So we can't fix part of you because everything in your body belongs together. Everything is interconnected. Like your, your vascular system is one system, okay? So your limb system is one system. So we can't treat just one area. We've got to treat the entire biological mind, um, bi biological sleep. system. And then sleep, you know, unfortunately, lots of us don't get sleep. I know I've had sleep disorder in my life, so I'm very familiar, but I'm always, and as you get older, you don't sleep as well. And that's why they saying sleep like a baby, because, you know, when you're a baby, of course, you know, you sleep very well, but you got to work on sleep and a lot of the environmental factors, the electromagnetic fields are disturbing people's sleep. Mm -hmm. So, and depletion of nutrients like magnesium, magnesium is a phenomenal supplement of helping sleep. Stress will affect it. Right. It, well. Yes. And a lot, I would say a lot of people are deficient in magnesium. Yeah. And then water, you've got to buy a water purification. You can't drink regular water because just the heavy metals alone that are in the water, not to mention all the chemicals, fluoride. are are terrible. Yeah. yeah. Fluoride, chlorine, insecticides, pesticides, there's a tremendous amount of toxicity in water. So buy something that is going to suit you, but you've got to drink purified water. Uh, be active daily. You have 800 muscles. You, your, your body can't have energy unless you stimulate the, the muscle energy packs on, the, on your legs. 
And so you've got to move on a regular basis and everybody unfortunately is sedentary and um, we've got to incorporate that, you know, anything yeah. is better, walking, stairs, you know, weights are always good because so many of us have losing our muscle mass as we age. So you have to incorporate some kind of uh, muscle exercises, weights, yeah. or you can use your own body and, and develop an exercise plan. The brain and the body love movement, right? right. They thrive on it. So. And then sunlight, we all need more sunlight. So getting sunlight regularly would be great. Um, you know, make food a priority, not, you know, organic, no hormones, not processed, no chemicals and all that kind of good stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, enjoy life. Yeah. You know, community is, I Huge. would say the number one thing for people is to have a, a great group of people around you who are thinking like you and also share and they, they want to help you be better. And one of the other big things we didn't write in here is stress, yeah. you know, ad address your stress. You know, we all have stress. So we, there's different ways that you can address stress. You can talk to a therapist. You can do e box with Liliana. You exercise, exercise, meditation, meditation every day. Um, you know, there's lots of meditation apps, but you have to, you know, unfortunately, we all have to have some coping mechanisms to in the world today. Because, and we'll do a, a whole class on stress, right. the testing. We want to test cortisol and DHEA and pregnenolone and some of those stress hormones to see where they're at. A lot of people are either too high or they're fatigued their adrenals and their cortisol levels and those hormones are kind of flatline. Right. And that's going to lead to everything from circadian rhythm disorders where you're not, you're waking up tired, you're tired in the afternoon, you can't get to sleep because your brain's racing, which means your cortisol is not shutting down. And then you can't stay asleep at night. Maybe you have low blood sugar and low heart rate or, or blood pressure. Those are all signs that there's a stress response that's probably been going on a long time. So just give you a We'll go over that. We'll definitely do a, a whole lecture on that. Um, so just to, just to wind up and we'll, we'll do a couple of questions. How are we doing on time, Doc? Did you see? It's, yeah, it's six o'clock. Okay. So um, if you're interested in a new patient inquiry on the uh, healing side, Dana is our correspondence there, 949-867-6374. If you're looking for prevention or wellness, that's the Center uh, for New Medicine side. That's 949-867-6419. And Miles is the correspondence there. Does a wonderful job. Both do a, a wonderful job. And then the Perfectly Healthy Store, 949-997-0821. Uh, that's if you have supplements that you need or anything like that. We have a store online, perfectlyhealthy.com, that has a lot of uh, the different supplements. And we'll talk about those more specifically to stress or specifically to the gut as we move through those in our uh, subsequent uh, cancer conversations. So what we'll do, let me see, we'll do a couple, so a couple questions. I know Dr. Keneally has to go um, shortly. So melanoma, six years, I get checked. Uh, I'm wondering if I should have any other preventative screenings done labs. Um, yes. Yeah, so I had a gentleman today, 38 years old, that had melanoma on his chest. And he had it removed and his dermatologist checks him and he said, uh, said, oh, you're fine. And then college said, oh, you're fine. And then I checked his circulating tumor cell test, which was RGCC. And then, of course, I did comprehensive labs on him also. And he's 38 and his testosterone is low, which is about 80% of young men today have low testosterone. And so anyway, I said, well, we got to fix everything. And then you, he, we had already given him his supplements to take for his circulating tumor cell and he hadn't even started that and that was six months ago i said no you have to do this because he's like well worried is it going to come back is it going to come back and i said well if we don't do the work yeah and we don't do the prevention and you don't do what Chances we need to do up. i said yes yeah, so we need to do what you need to do so he got regrouped and he was happy about that uh, or ivermectin. Ivermectin, yeah. uh, ivermectin we've been using for a very long time because we've been treating parasites for a very long time but ivermectin is one of the safest medications um, that you can take. In fact, I don't think I've ever had a patient have an issue with taking ivermectin, meaning some side effect. And it blocks eight pathways to cancer. So there's great articles online that you can read about how ivermectin blocks cancer. Uh, let's see. Lumber kinase twice a day, D-dimer still at 2.0. Should I do a full T CT scan with dye? Well, um, I, I don't know your history. 
Um, I would maybe change your supplement to Neprinol. You can call the Perfectly Healthy store. I find that to be a better supplement for, um, for, uh, for D-dimer. Mm -hmm. But also, I don't know if you've had COVID or COVID vaccine. If you've had COVID, your D-dimer can be elevated. If you've had the vaccine, the D-dimer can be elevated. So it's not just cancer. So you want to make sure that you get, um, you need to make sure that you get a workup because mm -hmm. 2.0 is not borderline. It's, it it should be less than 0.5. Mm -hmm. And the closer it is to 0.2 is even better. So I think, uh, I don't know your complete case, so I don't know exactly, you know, other things that, um, uh, you know, I mean, to give you the best direction. So, so. Um, Astrocytoma grade four, um, no symptoms from Guatemala. Um, do we have success? Has estrogen grade four, I'm not sure, with glioblamo G molecular characteristics. Well, one thing I would start doing right away is, you know, do all the basics that we've talked about, but also I would start inhaling um, uh, a hydrogen water right away and do that, you know, many times a day. Uh, hydrogen is the antidote for inflammation. It's very anti-cancer. It's it it basically takes everything out of your body and turns it into water. Yeah. And so hydrogen can be used topically. It can be used any part of your body. And uh, hydrogen medicine was started in Japan. I don't know, maybe I don't know, maybe 15 years ago. So I learned about it a long time ago. So we do a lot of hydrogen. We even do this amazing hydrogen uh, hydrotherapy acupuncture treatment mm -hmm. that we bathe your whole body front and back with hydrogen water mm -hmm. and do acupuncture and uh, acupressure on the body. It's, it's is really good Yeah, she that. is amazing. She's, really She's one that. of a kind. So um, anyway. Um, so, so Ms. Cynthia, counselors that can help with staying on course with products and IVs, hyperbaric. Yes, that's uh, two, yeah. two different, three different people. Kumi. The advocates, either Sara or Lauren and yes. or myself, that yeah. our job is to make sure that you have resources. And understanding that you could call. what to do. Yeah. yeah. And, and we could go over that um, as many times as you need to, to get that down and to help with scheduling and things like that. So, yes, m without question. Um, opinion on breast cancer, estrogen dominance, cause yes. and solution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So estrogen dominance is a big problem because theoretically your body shouldn't be making more estrogen than you need. But unfortunately, there's xenoestrogens. Xeno is the Greek word for foreign estrogens. And they're everywhere because all the chemicals that I talked about, plastics and psych, are all endocrine disruptors. Mm -hmm. So in, in conventional world, if you need uh, estrogen blockers with cancer, you would take either tamoxifen, letrozole, and nastrozole. But if you need an estrogen blocker and you're just for estrogen dominance, my favorite, my favorite uh, treatment is myomin. Uh, myomin, which you, that's also you can get at the store. Myomin, and I do anywhere from two to four twice a day or three times a day, depending on your clinical condition. Like for example, if you have fibroids, that's estrogen dominance. If you've got ovarian cysts, that's probably estrogen dominance. There's a lot of estrogen dominance because of stress causes mm, estrogen stress dominance. Lowering and then the, progesterone and, levels. Yeah, and lowering progesterone levels and just the environment in and of itself it is, creates an entire endocrine disruption in the body. Yeah, but that's a big deal. The yeah. estrogen dominance in today's world with, with especially female breast, uterine tissue, right? Big right. deal. Uh, other CTC that you mentioned besides well, RGCC. Yeah, they're circulating tumor cell and then mm -hmm. they're circulating tumor DNA. So mm -hmm. that's different. So the test that we use for circulating tumor cell, we use a couple of them. Uh, the one that I've used the most is RGCC. And um, there are, there's another one called Cell Search. Uh, there's another one called Minarini. I'm looking at another one called Datar from India. I'm just, I have to research because you have to research all of these different things before you implement them. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the other ones. You, you're probably thinking about the gallery, the circulating tumor DNA test. Yeah. So that's a new one, like a liquid biopsy. Mm -hmm. Yes, we use it to follow like colon cancer, 
Um, right now, I think it's also available now for breast. It was first FDA approved just for colon cancer. So it's something that um, definitely, um, you know, it's becoming now the fastest growing field is circulating tumor DNA and circulating tumor cells. So it is, yeah. Uh, somebody asked Karen, uh, what would it cost to come to the clinic for three weeks? It really depends. If you're looking at, I'm just trying to be healthy, be healthy it's one thing. prevention, or you have active cancer, uh, usually active cancer, four to six weeks is probably a minimum, right? you know, mm -hmm. uh, to be here. Or, and it depends. Like, let's say you had breast cancer and there's a breast lump, you know, right. that that's going to be shorter than if you're up stage four, it could be a long time. Yeah, okay. Right. Because stage four is there's nothing fast or simple about stage four we gotta and throw so everything at it you gotta throw everything out because just because you get rid of cancer doesn't mean you've changed the environment and the terrain yeah. and the underlying factors right. that cancer comes back if you do not change your terrain and your environment yeah. so so that's a hard one to answer karen it just depends on many different yeah send uh, your information in and then yeah, we'll, we'll know we'll take a look High number of circulating tumors are low. What's the what's the scale? Well, doc? the goal is zero, right? Yeah. Okay, but the highest I've ever had is sixteen, and that person who I just saw, she's been my patient for tw a dozen years. She had kidney cancer, and she had the highest, uh, one of the highest. There's not that many with sixteen circulating tumors. Mm -hmm. So, but she's alive and well today. She's seventy eight. She lives in Idaho, and she's doing great. And um, she lives, you know, the, the right life. And, and so ideally you want it between one and five, uh, because that means you have less work to do. If you have 16, you know, you're going to have a lot more work to do. So, so ideally a lower amount is better, but you know, our goal is to get you to zero to one. Yeah. So somebody asked, uh, I think this is a good question as far as cost, you know, overall to come to the to center and somehow I lost it. Yeah. Anyway, okay. is your hyperbaric harder? It's hard. We all we have hard. Uh, yes, the soft I don't use. I I I returned my soft one twenty five years ago. So I, I use we use real hyperbaric chambers. So yeah, you can go on our website and see. And again, I saw a brief on the cost, gang. It's really dependent upon what's presented, right? right. So so just as an example, I have somebody that came in today. Uh, had lumpectomy, had radiation, had, um, um, uh, let's see, surgery, radiation, did the circulating tumor cell, clean. She's here probably once a week doing either a vitamin C, some EBU, lymphatic massage. We have her on a maintenance program. Right. That 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 could be per month, I don't know, $600, $800, not, yeah. right? Or you have a stage four coming here. Every okay, day. That, that could be, depending on what we think she needs, that could be, you know, a week, a couple thousand or more dollars. I mean, it, it really just depends. We're, our job is just to tell you what you need and, and then we have to figure it out from there. So, but, it, but it's really hard to tell depending on the, the person uh, and what they're exposed to. Um, EMFs, yeah, so I believe, she, the question is how much does EMF yeah. affect mold, dental, and or everything? Yeah. So way up. EMF, if you want to read the best book on the invention of electricity and EMFs and chronicles it with the chronology of illness, the best book is Alex uh, Furstenberg. It was called The Invisible Rainbow. And uh, another great guy who talks about and very good information is Nicholas Pinault, P-I-N-E-A-L-T. So the there are so much there's so much on emf and it we don't even we we know a lot but we don't know all everything yeah because now we're every day the amount of 5g and satellites and everything goes in electronic devices are going up it's the number one lobby in washington mm -hmm. and so and no one pays attention to what this does deleterious to the body but literally every single day you're affecting your calcium channels the way, so you're causing this influx Energy. of calcium. Mm -hmm. So your body's an energetic machine. So I believe that if my my daughter, when, you know, 16 years ago, she did how EMFs affect a living substance. And we saw it, what it does to how you, you know, grow wheatgrass and the fast growing things we took. And then we also did thermography on people's head. And we showed it before cell phone use, a minute after, five minutes after, an hour, and four hours later, your brain's still inflamed. That's why you should never talk on your tele cell phone 
you should only use speakerphone or special non-toxic ear things, not mm -hmm. the ones, not the, not the, I don't know what brand they are, those, uh, the brand uh, ear things. Yeah, I don't know if we should say it anyway, but yeah, you know what exactly. it is. Exactly, <laughs> but yeah, so I, you have to buy the yeah. old kind, you know, that they're I not. still hardwire. Hardwire, wire. yeah. So it's a very, very, very big problem. Trust me, it's bigger than you can imagine. Yeah. Uh, I, I signed up for Alex, uh, a newsletter. I love him because his passion and his mission is like ours. And so I just love that he's so passionate about, you know, the 8 billion people using cell phones every day. He really is. And you'll love him too. And so anyway, so you got to ground every day. You got to do something every day to kind of, I turn off my Offset. electricity. I have a canopy on my bed of EMF blank. You know, oh, I got, I have everything. Yeah. So. Um, well, when you read the research. Yeah. When you read it, you, you can't, you know, yeah. you can't unsee what you know. So. But. but Marley, mold, big factor today, right? Uh, Neil Nathan has written a book. Uh, if you ever mm, want to read a good book, uh, Toxic, it's a great book on mold and Lyme. Dental, significant oral cavity, a lot of research. Emotional is probably the highest. So you really, you hit all of them that, that we look at. So when somebody comes in over the course of their time here. We're addressing we're all addressing that. All that. So those are, that's a good question. Yeah, a it is. Concern. But all of those are important. Yeah. And nothing is more important than the other. They're all very important it's it's like asking a mother what one thing did you do to raise your child well no you did thousands of things so it's the same thing when mastering this miracle that we all get to live in every day charlotte asked about vitamin d and higher afp and 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 then uh folate there's a lot to that question that sometimes we have to look in my opinion at at more um when when it, folate are we talking about um, you know, a methylation issue. Are we mm -hmm. talking about vitamin D? I, I don't, I don't, I've never seen that correlation of you, Doc. No, as far I as have know. never seen that, but I'll, I'll, Charlotte, we're going to look it up. Yeah. So I and have then, a meeting yep, uh, we have right to go, now gang. with, uh, actually, I'll tell you who I'm having a yeah, meeting with. Yeah. The gentleman who I was talking about, that's a sarcoma survivor. I'm having a um, dinner with him because he flew in from, I don't know, Oregon or wherever he is. So he's the son of the gentleman I met. So I, you know, he asked to have dinner and to talk and tell us things that are going on with different herbs and stuff. And so that's what I'm going to go learn about. So stay tuned. Awesome. So thank you so much, right. guys. Thanks, Please try to share this with your friends and family and all your loved ones. We have to change the 8 billion people around the world because, you know, wherever we are, you, you, they're, they're, they're suffering the same way. Okay. And so the more that we educate every single person and you can change your family unit, the world's going to be a better place for all of us. So yeah. thank you. Agree, agree, right? It's up to us to make that change and to educate. So that's what we're going to do. So we'll, we'll send out, um, you know, a, a notice like we do every, every other week as far as these, uh, the cancer conversations. We have a long list of the topics and they're going to get into specific treatments. They'll get into all the different causes and what testing to do. So I know I saw some of those questions about that. I mean, we're going to hit every pillar. We're going to talk about pillar one and the testing. Then we're going to talk about pillar two and how to kill the cancer cells and what do we use to do that and how do we do the um, repurpose drugs and, and how are we starving things? What are we using for oxygen therapy? What are we doing to alkalize the body? What are we doing to boost the immune system? What are we doing to, for the causes? I mean, we're going to go through all that. Uh, with each uh, conversation. So um, we're going to get into it all for sure. And then we're going to have special guests and speakers and so forth. So it'll be a good year uh, without question. So gang, I will, what I'll have um, Shep do, we'll get these questions. We'll make sure we answer them. We'll send them out to everybody. And then, um, and that's how we'll address the ones that are left. Okay. So listen, have a great week. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. If you have questions, concerns, Call us, reach out to us. We're here to help. Um, you know, unbiasedly, I always tell everybody, I'll give you my opinions unbiasedly. I'll tell you what I think. I'll tell you what my eyeballs tell me. I'll tell you what I would do for a family member or a, or a, a best friend. I just give it to you straight as far as what I think. Um, and it doesn't always mean, you know, here. It may be referring you to another place. I don't know. But I can tell you that if you need help, we're definitely here to help. So um, anyway, my best. Good luck. If you need us, give us a call uh, and, um, and have a great couple weeks. Okay?
okay? See everybody. Be good.